we're just out on the road on the A5 after all the dyno testing that we've uh, just carried out. Watch that video and all the previous ones if you're not too sure what we're talking about. Yeah, the car feels tons better. It's uh, obviously going from standard 230s to 220, I think, 220 something it is, 340 with a water injection. It's uh, making a big difference. And uh, driving it steady like this and drive feels absolutely fine. It never feels like it's hanging in gears or anything because it's not making the torque into a big turbo. Down a little bit, kicks down and maybe start going over a big bump. But uh, the drive's really nice to be honest, it's uh, as you'd expect. So it's uh, definitely nothing lost that you feel like you're missing at the bottom end. Driving absolutely fine, so performance wise, we'll. Uh, do a couple of launches at the mini. Shouldn't have anything uh, going on for the gearbox as far as launch control and stuff like that. We're, uh, we're working on that. We'll try and get it to rent three and a half grand or something like that when uh, when it's at launch. But as an accurate test, we want to keep it same as it was before. It's probably not a setup most people with this spec would want to keep it as, but. As an accurate comparison, we want to make sure we keep that equal. We don't want the biggest gains to be from the gearbox to be hiding the fact that the engine's extra power's not making any difference, or it's making a massive difference, and the gearbox is not making as much of it up. So, but knowing what we know from the ZF8 stuff, from the automatic gearboxes in like the SQ5 and that sort of platform, it's almost certain that that's the key part to making these new modern cars faster than the old ones and that's just the gearbox itself so we'll uh, pull up spot traction off see what it does yeah we got 4.4 seconds to 60 there so that's like a ton faster it's uh, definitely feel it. So we uh, do the usual, go round and back up, see what we get. So I'm hoping with a little bit of uh, gearbox tweaking, we can improve on this massively because you can, uh, as you'll be able to see from the videos, it's only revving it to just over 1500 RPM and you've got like, it's got to be what, half a second delay before it seems to feel like you get everything did that on every every time we've launched it since we built the car it's done that but we'll uh, see what we can get doing uh, a little gearbox tweak and see if we can get that response at the sort of 0 to 25 30 mile an hour faster do you remember that initial kick in the back that you get from like uh, BMW 335D or Audi SQ5 like those give you a real shove in the back straight away and it just keeps going from there. This is taking a little bit of time to come in. You'll be able to see. anyway so a bit pointless but you have to take our word for it I suppose yeah, it's uh, ridiculous the difference uh, the turbo's many but you were fast before and now it's uh, significantly faster 
and uh, both of those runs when we are the water, water injection which makes a decent enough difference on the dyno but I think we'll, uh, we'll leave that testing with the water meth on and off until we've done the gearbox and got the launch control behaving because we'll only end up doing everything twice it took long enough to do all the dyno testing never mind uh, doing all the testing of the water injection on the road So we're at in A5 after we've uh, done the gearbox mapping. We'll do a little bit of uh, water injection testing as well. We're um, not expecting to see a massive difference, but we're doing a little bit of logging and uh, we'll do a bit of analysis during this video and uh, come up with some uh, difference in figures. So. So anyway, so the next test, we need to do some some uh, 0 to 60 pulls, see what difference the, uh, the gearbox tunes make. Because at the minute, in sport, we've lifted the, uh, I'll put it into drive just so you can't hear it. We've changed the uh, shift points to 5,000 instead of 48. Um, we've changed the speed at which the paddles react, so you click it, and it's in manual, it's not gone into manual, but click it, boom, straight there, no messing, click it again, straight there, it's a, it's a lot better, a lot more responsive. I think we can, uh, we can do a little bit with that to make them a little bit better maybe. So we'll uh, see what we can do with them. So the main difference that we wanted to make were to the, uh, the launch control RPM. Before, it were only holding it to uh, about 15, 1600 RPM, which is a little bit annoying. You can, some of these cars have got like a, a proper launch control function. Well, that's not the case on this one. When we finally dug deep in the, uh, in the gearbox mapping, <coughs> the, uh, the temperature at which you can have the uh, launch control activated is like set to some sort of crazy minus value so you'd never be able to get to it so we're assuming it's only drive select cars that have got launch control so you put it into sport sport gearbox you'll get everything that you need so we did a little test in the yard and the rpm does go up a little bit it's not perfect we wanted nearer to 3000 so there's, there's another limiter somewhere maybe but this is revving uh, be on that 1500 so we'll see what difference this makes then we'll spend a little bit of time uh, when it's warm and when we've actually got a chance spend a little bit more time to uh, optimize it to get it absolutely perfect so we're in sport traction control traction control all the way off let's rev in more ridiculous how much quicker it got it so that was, according to this, 4.2 to 60. But for some reason, what we see on there and what the uh, what we get told when we put the uh, into the performance tools software is a little bit different. But the standard we're seeing, like six seconds. Now we're at 4.2, so we're knocking nearly 0.2 seconds off. So for fairness go around again and do it the other way like we always do but that were unbelievable how much different the uh, the initial kick in the back well this is getting a lot closer to like what the uh, ZF8 speeds in like the SQ5 A7 all those sort of cars it's getting nearer to that sort of immediate kick no delays straight there so this is with the meth on so we'll uh, we'll do another run after turn that off just for fairness so we're ready so we've got another 4.2 so we'll, uh, we'll turn the meth off this time see what difference it makes I expect it to make a massive difference and then uh, we've got time 
might uh, get my passenger to get out because uh, he's not helping. We'll see what difference that makes, but it's uh, can't believe the difference. It just feels so much faster. So it shows that uh, all the changes that we're making are, are positive anyway. We've not really done anything at all that's uh, made this any slower, so which is always a good thing. Everything on the dyno worked, more power, so pretty happy with that. So the water injection's off, we'll see what happens. No, I thought hard on the brake, flat on the brake, and off we go. So that was 4.4. So we are making a little bit of difference with the meth. Obviously, we'll uh, have to go back up again to be sure of that. But we'll uh, see what difference that makes. And uh, go from there. But it's uh, 0.2 seconds not to be sniffed at if, uh, if that can be. Uh, Confirmed on the way back up again. But yeah, feels uh, feels good. But this turbo has got much much more potential. We're only running it. it sort of. I don't want to get into percentage terms or how much, but it's definitely nowhere near its percentage it, it, potential. We're um, running. So it's on 2.3 bars of boost. Gets a little bit higher when you're running the water injection, which is, uh, is to be expected. But we're uh, actually getting a bit more mass flow there. But the, uh, the turbo's gonna be able to do at least 2.8 bars when, we're, uh, when we've got enough fuel to cope. But we can, we can turn it up a little bit as it is now and not really have any problems. says 4.2 again so not much difference with the water injection but if we're saying very similar tiny a little bit increase it's, it's, uh, it's all doable but the uh, the biggest gains on this I imagine from the water injection are going to be uh, the stuff that we can't really monitor we'll just pour the now and we'll have a quick look uh, look at the data and uh, see what we've got from before. So yeah, when we had a look on the, uh, the before and after on the water injection, we'd, uh, the FR's dropping two points from 15.2, which is pretty much smoke-free, to 13.2, which on a car like this is uh, visible smoke, which uh, it's, it's quite a decent bit. It's, uh, like on, uh, on the track car that we run, we're running probably 18 AFR, which is like completely smoke free. A standard car can be anything from like 20 to 25. Um, so, yeah, the boost control it's holding a little bit more stable at the top um, because of the extra flow. The veins don't have to work as much to keep it, keep it in trimmed. It does creep up a little bit. So, if you're running a really tiny turbo and running tons of water injection, be careful. Um, but we saw a decrease in exhaust temperatures around 15 to 20 degrees, so they're down below 900 now, whereas when the tune were up at, when, it, when it's off with this tune, we're sat at around 910, which is still a little bit, we could have a little bit more EGTs, but if you saw the uh, video on the dyno, we're already dropping into limp mode. So I'm gonna let my passenger get out now, and uh, I might come back for him, I might not. This car so badly wants a bigger fuel pump. We need to uh, we need to get that on sooner rather than later. But we've got a couple of other things we need to do first. There in the upcoming videos. We uh, yeah, it's really liking this project. Hopefully everybody's liking the videos. A few negative things mainly coming from. Uh, friends and family, so don't hold back. 
tell us if uh, there's anything. The audio, hopefully, fingers crossed, should be better. We've tried a few different things and uh, they've not been working as well as we'd hoped. So we think we've got the audio absolutely in check now, but if not, let us know. And uh, if you've got a bit of constructive criticism, try and uh, maybe make a suggestion as well, and that'll help us even more, because we're, uh, we're definitely struggling on some stuff. There's uh, some minefield. So anyway, traction's off, sport mode, cameras are all rolling, a little bit of free space. See what it can do when our passenger. So you can definitely notice a difference there because on the launch we the limiter going from first into second, which I might as well demonstrate now. We've got rid of the auto upshift in manual, so we can. Uh, put our couple of meter on so we'll see if, uh, if we can get it to do it. See that's the hard couple of meter. Works fine, shakes the car a little bit but that's what happens with uh, 95,000 mile old engine mounts. It's not going to snap the crank like people would like to say but it does mean we need to uh, we need to maybe lower the shift speed, uh, shift time, RPM. Or we need to lift the high cut up a little bit just so in sport when you're launching it, you're not going to get that where we're overshooting. Just everything's only so fast, you can't quite catch. We've got a couple hundred RPM buffer, but that's still not enough for it to, uh, for it to catch on. So we'll. Uh, We'll get pulled over again. We'll have some clear space and just do a little quick sprint. I'm not sure what happened there. It's not quite as fast as we're hoping. I don't know why it says 4.6. We'll uh, figure that one out later.